famous cigarettes present The Big Story. Hey, Idaho. Yeah, kid? My back feels broken riding on the floor of this empty box car. <laughs> You'll get used to it, kid. You'll get used to oh, it. Oh, no, not me. Maybe you're going to go on being a hobo all your life, but not me. Huh? I got big ideas. What kind of big ideas? I'm going to be a big shot someday, Idaho. A big shot? Yeah. When I do, I'm going to ride the cushions in a Pullman car. First class. Big Story, another in a thrilling series based on true experiences of newspaper reporters. Tonight, to Russ Wilson of the Des Moines Tribune, goes the Pell-Mell Award for The Big Story. that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package, Pell-Mell. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pell-Mell? There's a reason. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes... Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell-Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pell-Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke of this longer, finer cigarette. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. And they are mild. Now the exciting and authentic story of the case of the ambitious hobo. Russ Wilson. And right now, you hang your hat in the city room of a California newspaper. But actually, you're from out where the tall corn grows, in Iowa. For years, you worked for the Des Moines Tribune as a crime reporter. And it was with the Tribune that you finally nailed down your big story. It really began some 250 miles south of Des Moines, in a little home in Kansas City. Freddie, you listen to me. Don't leave home again. Stay here. Sorry, Mom, but I'm through hanging around the house being a burden to you. The last time you left home, you were gone two years. I never even knew where you were or what you did. I worry about you, son. You're only a boy. You... That's the trouble. That's what everybody thinks. Everyone around here still calls me Babyface. Babyface Freddie Bell. But I'm no kid anymore, see? Even if I look it. I'm 21. And I can't just sit around here and watch you work to support oh, me. Son, if you stay home, there are plenty of jobs. Not my kind of jobs. I want to be rich, famous. I want to own a big car, a big house, have ten suits of clothes. I want to make sure you never have to work again, Mom. I want people to turn around and look at me when I walk down the street and hear them say, There goes Freddie Bell, the big shot. I wish your father was alive. I, I wish he was here to advise you. I, I don't know what to do. I can only say I think you're making a terrible mistake. Oh, no, I'm not. It's like in those stories you used to read me when I was a kid. I've got to go out and seek my fortune. You wouldn't stand in my way, would you, Mom? No. No, son. If that's what you want, I won't try to stop. Oh, now you're talking. Um... Mom, I hate to ask you this, but I'm going to need some money to get started on my trip. How about that $20 you got saved up for that washing machine you were going to buy? 
Oh, I, I know. It's all you have, and I, I feel like a heel asking you for it, honest, but... Uh, you don't have to ask me for it, Freddy. It's yours. <laughs> Daylight in an hour, Idaho. When's this here freight train get to Des Moines? This is a highball freight, kid. She's been hitting the high iron ever since we jumped aboard at Kansas City. You're in the outskirts of Des Moines now. <laughs> We've played in luck. Well, why, Idaho? Brakeman hasn't been around to bother us the whole trip. Once we hit the yard, she'll slow down. We'll drop off this boxcar. And after that? After that, I'll take you to the hobo jungle and introduce you to some of the other bulls riding this territory. Well, it can't come too soon for me. My back's broken riding on this boxcar floor. <laughs> Someday when I get rich, Idaho, I'm gonna ride the cushions on the Pullman cars. First class. You still think you're gonna be a big shot, huh, kid? I got my mind set on it. Yeah, and stay away from the road. Don't go getting cinders in your blood. Train whistles ringing in your ears, like I did. It ain't the life of a kid like you. You expect to be a bum all your life, Idaho? Not a bum, kid. A hobo. What's the difference? Plenty. Bum's a, a tramp. He won't work. He'll steal. Hobo's different. He'll work. He'll be asked to. And he's got respect for the law. And... Hey, kid. Yeah? Trouble coming up. The brakeman's coming. Where? He's on the catwalk two cars ahead. Get away from the door, kid. The brakeman will be on the roof of this boxcar in a minute. Oh, what of it? If he sees us, he'll throw us off this train. Oh, no, he won't, Idaho. He won't. You heard me. You mean, kid? I mean this, Idaho. Where'd you get that knife? <laughs> KC. A Bowie knife, they call it. <laughs> and if that brakey sticks his head through this car door, I'll cut it off for him. Kid, wait a minute. What's <laughs> come over you? Put, put that knife away. Oh, shut up, Idaho. I'll take care of this. You shut up. The brakey's on the roof of this car now. If he looks in, I'll shove this knife right through him. Oh. He's gone. Yeah. He's gone, kid. Now you're gone. Hey, uh, Idaho, what's the idea? What do you think you're doing with that iron bar? Get off this train, kid. Well, wait a minute, Idaho. You I had me fooled with that baby face of yours. Now I know what kind of a big shot you want to be. You want to be a big shot like Dillinger, Legs Diamond. Yeah, what of it? You're a killer, kid. I don't want to be traveling around with a killer. We part company here and now. Get off this freight, kid. Why, I, I let you have this knife you right through You try anything, kid, and you'll get this iron bar right across your face. Go on, jump. Okay, Idaho. I'll jump. But I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Give me a lift. Maybe. Let me get a good look at you first. Don't like to pick up strangers when it's dark like this unless... <laughs> Why, you're only a kid. Okay, hop in. Gee, thanks. <laughs> now, what are you doing outside of Des Moines at five in the morning? Oh, just hitchhiking around. Got the itchy foot. So. I had it too before I got married. My name's Carl Andrews. I'm Freddie Bell. I'm glad to know you, Freddie. This sure is a beautiful car. Yep. Brand new, and it's got every gadget in the book. Custom made, too. Is it your car? Mine. <laughs> oh, no. What would I be doing owning a car like this? I work for a garage, just delivering the car to the guy who owns it. He's a bank president in Des Moines. So it belongs to a, a big shot, huh? That's right. This is the kind of car I'm going to drive. <laughs> well, I wish you luck, kid. I hope you do someday. Oh, I'm not talking about someday, pal. I mean now. Huh? 
I'm going to start right in being a big shot now. What are you talking about? This. Well, I'll be... Put that knife away, kid. Uh, pull over to the side of the road, pal. I'm taking over. Have you gone crazy? Stop the car and pull over to the side. What do I have to carve you up? <laughs> you wouldn't dare use that knife. Not a kid like you. Oh, well, wouldn't I, pal? Wouldn't I? I've been waiting for a chance like this. You're bluffing, kid. <laughs> There's a state police barracks down the highway. And... No. No, kid, no. You ask for it. Give me that wheel. Give me that <laughs> Russ Wilson of the Des Moines Tribune get the murder flash shortly after dawn. You hightail it to the scene, and when you get there, you find the usual crowd, radio patrolmen, detectives, deputy coroner, just plain citizens, and Officer James Hodge of the Iowa State Bureau of Investigation. You take a long look at the body, and then you manage to get Officer Hodge over to one side. Any identification on the dead man yet, Hodge? Mm-hmm. A garage mechanic named Carl Andrews. Anything else? What do you mean? Any more information I can use for a story? Look, Wilson, according to everything I read, newspaper reporters and private detectives are real bright guys. They always capture the criminal single handed. Professional cops just a dope wouldn't know a clue if he saw one. So, uh, why don't you get your own information? Hmm? Frankly, I wouldn't know how. I've never captured a criminal in my life. Well, you probably think you could. I know very well I couldn't. What's the matter, Hodge? Got a big hate on reporters? One of us spell your name wrong or something? All right, all right. So I got out of bed on the wrong side this morning. <laughs> what do you want to know? Just the regular stuff. The motive for this murder, for instance. Robbery, I suppose. You suppose wrong. Andrews had 50 bucks on him. Killer didn't even touch it. That's funny. If the killer wasn't interested in money, what did he want? You figure that out, reporter. Let me know. Uh, how about revenge? Maybe Andrews was riding with someone he knew, a personal enemy. Unlikely. Check with the people in Andrews' garage. They didn't have an enemy in the world. Then you haven't got an awful lot to go on, have you? Enough to catch the killer. What? Fingerprints. Fingerprints? Well, I thought Yeah, that you... yeah, I know. Just like in detective stories. Only sometimes killers really do leave fingerprints. This one did. He was smart enough to wipe them off the steering wheel, but in his hurry to make a getaway, forgot to wipe them off the door handle. We'll probably know who he is within a few hours. City desk, Russ Wilson. I'm calling from headquarters. Those fingerprints belong to a kid named Freddie Bell. He served a term in jail out west for armed robbery. Police expect to pick him up any hour now. Police don't pick him up. A day passes. Two. Three. The manhunt hits high gear. Goes out of the state nationwide. You follow it close. Write story after story. The Tribune is flooded with tips. You track them down. Find them worthless. And then, days later, when the authorities are just about ready to concede a clean getaway, you get a phone call. Hello? Is this Russ Wilson? Yeah. I've been reading those stories he wrote out of Carl Andrews' murder case, and I got a tip on the killer. Who's this? Never mind. You want that tip on the killer, or don't you? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Okay. Meet me at the Hobo's Jungle near the freight yards midnight tonight. The Hobo's Jungle? That's right. Uh, and Wilson? Yeah? Just a word of warning. Don't talk to the cops and come along. We'll be back in just a moment with tonight's big story. But first, a word from Cy Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pell-Mell... that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette, 
in the distinguished red package. Pell-Mell. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell-Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pell-Mell's greater length of traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos filters the smoke of this longer, finer cigarette. Gives you that smoothness, mildness, and satisfaction no other cigarette offers you. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. And they are mild. <laughs> Now back to our narrator, Bob Sloan, and tonight's big story. You, Russ Wilson of the Des Moines Tribune, have a date with a mysterious voice on the telephone. Your rendezvous? A hobo jungle near the freight yards at midnight. Your mission? To find a killer. When you cross the tracks in the darkness and head for the clearing they call the hobo's jungle, you're scared plenty. Somewhere in the distance, you hear a train. And right now, you wish you were on that train. You wish you were anywhere but where you are. But you keep on walking. And finally, you hit the jungle itself, where the hobos camp. You see the ashes of the cooking fires, bits of cast-off clothing, and tin cans littered about. And you keep on walking. Wilson? Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, it's so dark here. You're I... right on time. Who are you? Your name's Jones, Idaho Jones. I'm a hobo. Uh, why did you want me to meet you out here? I figured it was safer for me. If I met you in town, it'd be too easy for you to turn me over to the cops if you didn't believe my story. I see. You said over the phone that you had a tip on the Carl Andrews murder. Yeah. What's the tip? I seen the killer about 7 o'clock this evening. You saw Freddy Bell? Yep. Baby face and all. Where? Right here where you're standing. You mean he's right here in Des Moines? He was. I just spot him. Uh, along about dark tonight, me and another bow started to burn some kindling to cook up some coffee and slum. I remember it had started to rain. My friend was telling about other hobo jungles. You know, Idaho, the best one I ever seen was off the D.L. and W. in Air Scranton. It was built against the clay bank to keep out the wind, and there was... Whitey, hold it. What's the matter, Idaho? Somebody's coming. Yeah. I wonder if you two guys could deal me in a little stew. I... Oh, it's you, Idaho. Yeah, it's me, Freddy. Who's this baby face, Idaho? Freddy Bell. Knifed a guy to death near here a couple of weeks ago. Look, Idaho, I didn't do it. That ain't what the Des Moines papers say, kid. They're lying. I tell you I didn't. Don't lie to me, kid. I know you did it. How do you know? What makes you think I did it? Carl Andrews was murdered at half past four, like this reporter Wilson in the Tribune says. And at four o'clock, you jumped the freight we was traveling right about the place where Andrews was killed. You were carrying a knife. And you were in a killing mood. Well? Okay, okay. So I knifed him. So I'm on the lam. Look, guys, I'm taking the next freight south for Kansas City. All I want's a little stew. Eat it, kid. But I'm a hobo like the two of you. Oh, no, you're not, kid. You're a killer. Now beat it. And if you're going to KC, don't try to go by freight. What do you mean? He means not to ride the rods of boxcars. That's hobo law. Jungle law. If you're going to Kansas City, you'll have to hit the highway. It's rides by car. Wait a minute, wise guys. You can't tell me how to travel. Can't we, kid? If any hobo catches you on a freight, he'll throw you off the train. That's the law. We don't want any killers riding the rails. Brings the cops down too quick. The highway's about a mile east of here. Now beat it, kid. Get going. 
That's the story, Mr. Wilson. That's the last I saw of Babyface Bell, but it looked to me like he was still carrying a knife and still figuring on using it. Did you call me right after he left? Yeah. Yeah, that means he got about a five-hour start. You think he's heading for Kansas City? Right. Why did you tip me off to this, Idaho? Well, when the cops find out Freddie Bell's a hobo, they'll raid this jungle, close it up. I figured if I tipped them off through you, they might let us hobos alone, maybe. You see what I mean, Wilson? Sure, Idaho, sure. I see what you mean. Come on. I want you to tell this story to a friend of mine. All set with those pictures, Hodge? Yep. Got seven different photographs here on my desk. Every one of them out of the rogues' gallery, with the names blanked out. And Freddie Bell's picture is one of them. Right. Yeah. This hobo picks it, we'll know he's not talking through his hat. We'll know that he's seen the right man. Yeah. Much as I hate to admit it, this is a good idea of yours, reporter. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'll let him in now. Money night, home. What's this all about, Wilson? Take it easy, take it easy. We just want to see whether you can pick Freddie Bell from these pictures. Go ahead, Idaho, pick it out. Which one of these pictures is Freddie Bell? Mm. Uh, uh, this here one, this picture, the third from the left. That's Freddie Bell. I'd know him anywhere. Well, Jim? He's right, reporter. That does it. Good. What now? First, I'm going to send out a general alarm. Notify all road patrols and police between here and Kansas City. Fine. That'll give me a chance to phone in a lead. I can just make my audition. After that, where do we go from here? For a ride along the highway to Kansas City. Yeah? Excuse me, ma'am. I'm on my way to Kansas City hitchhiking. I'm hungry. I wonder if you could spare me a meal. Why, it's a shame, nice-looking boy like you going hungry. Come in, come in. Oh, gee, thanks, ma'am. You're swell. You remind me of my mother. Did you notify the police immediately after you heard that Freddie Bell was in this area, Mrs. Henshaw? Oh, yes, Mr. Hodge. But I don't believe that this boy who had a meal right here in my house was the killer at all. Why don't you believe it, Mrs. Henshaw? Why, he seemed like a nice boy, and he had such a kind face. How's chances on a ride in your truck, driver? Oh, I don't know. We're not supposed to take any riders. Where are you going? Kansas City. Well, you look like a nice kid, and you're a long way from home. Come ahead. Hop in. Where did you pick up this kid in your truck, driver? Right outside of St. Joe, Mr. Hodge. But when the state troopers put up that roadblock and looked into my truck, the kid was gone. Well, that's that. Let's go, Hodge. If you ask me, Mr. Wilson, you two are barking up the wrong tree. Are we? Why? Why, that kid was clean cut, a regular fella. He didn't look anything like a killer to me. Let me in, Mom. Let me in. Freddy. Shut the door quick. Freddy, the police were here. They, they told me about what you'd done. Look, I, I haven't got much time, Mom. Cook up something for me to eat. Something to take along. Sandwiches, anything. I gotta get some clothes and get out of here in a hurry. Freddy, why did you do it? Why did you Will do you stop it? Stop gabbing and get busy. I'm on the lamb, see? Freddy, they're I... after me, breathing on my neck. Freddy, where are you going? Where can you go? I'm gonna get me a, a job somewhere. Some place where they won't look for me. With the railroad, maybe, working on a section gang. Don't do it, son. Give yourself up. Have you gone nuts? But you've got to give yourself up. You killed a man. You're a murderer. Yeah. Ain't that something, Mom? You're the mother of a big shot now. I'll pick you up like Blake's Diamond, Dylan, to the rest of them. I got my picture in the papers. Reporters writing stories about me. A real public enemy. Okay, now, Mom, get me that grub. I gotta beat it. Still following the trail, 
you and Hodge check with the railroads and find that they're hiring section gangs at Liberty, Missouri, about 20 miles out of Kansas City. On a chance, you show up at the employment shack, and sure enough, the timekeeper tells you he's hired a new man. And just as you walk out in the freight yard, you see babyface Freddie Bell. There's a hotshot freight train coming through, southbound. And Jim Hodge draws his gun and yells, Hey, you, Bell! I'm in mean, with your hands up! Oh, yeah! Try it! Hodge, he's making a run for it. He's going to try and catch that freight. He's not going to make it. <laughs> okay, Bill. Try these bracelets on for size. I could have made it. I could have made it. Steve. Why didn't you, baby face? Afraid he might have gotten you with a second shot. I, I, I... A lot different when you're on the receiving end, isn't it, kid? All right, let's go, Wilson. Right. We get the flyer back to Des Moines. We hurry. The flyer? Ain't that a... A Pullman? That's right, baby face. Why? That's funny. That's real funny. What's so funny? When I was riding the boxcars, I swore that someday I'd be a, a big shot and ride the Pullman first class. And here I am. A big shot with my picture in all the papers. And, and riding a Pullman car first class. Just as I said I would. Yeah. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Russ Wilson with the final outcome of tonight's big story. Pell famous cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The longer, finer cigarette in the distinguished red package. Pall Mall famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. <laughs> we read you that telegram from Russ Wilson of the Des Moines Tribune. Youthful killer in tonight's big story was brought to trial, convicted of murder, and sentenced to life imprisonment in the Iowa State Penitentiary. Ten years later, he made a daring escape from prison, but after several weeks at liberty, he voluntarily returned to jail and is now serving out his sentence. Many thanks for tonight's Pell Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. The makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the pages of the Nashville Banner. Byline, Marshall Morgan. A big story about two penniless parents and a reporter who saw to it that two children got what they wanted for Christmas. <laughs> The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor and directed by Harry Ingram with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Max Ehrlich. Your narrator was Bob Sloan and George Petrie played the part of Russ Wilson. All names in tonight's story except that of Mr. Wilson were fictitious, but the dramatization was based on a true and authentic case. This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pall Mall Famous Cigarettes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.